In today's KSAT Q&A, as on most Tuesdays, we are joined by San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg. And for this segment, we like to call it affectionately Mayor on the Move. You're on the road somewhere here this evening, so we're glad you got some solid Wi-Fi so you can be with us uh, here tonight. Mayor, thanks, because I know your schedule's packed, especially with budget season, as we covered a little bit earlier in the show. We'll talk about some key items in that budget proposal here in a second. But I want to first talk to you about school safety. Yesterday in this segment, we had Congressman Tony Gonzalez join us, and he talked about your role in trying to get some federal dollars to come to San Antonio to be used for school safety. Talk about that effort and where we are now in that process. Sure. Well, Congressman Gonzalez and I spoke yesterday, and he was in town also for a roundtable with school leaders as well as uh, law enforcement to talk about the issue of school safety, which is on everyone's mind, particularly the parents who are sending their children off to school this week and, and for the rest of the month. And, you know, as a result of, you know, the challenges that we see in schools across America, but also some of the mandates provided to the school districts to uh, fund uh, school safety, uh, we'll be working together to identify areas where we can help with that. and. Part of that is some um, uh, federal dollars that he's going to be applying uh, on our behalf for in terms of, uh, you know, discretionary budgets and, and earmarks. And we talked about how we can work together to identify best community wide application uh, of those dollars should they be uh, awarded uh, in the federal process. So I want to thank Congressman Gonzalez again for working uh, across the community to, to identify ways that we can shore up uh, those things that are most important to us, which is public safety, particularly for our school children. Yeah, in that roundtable he hosted yesterday, we heard from several different school leaders about funding being the issue to meet some of these requirements to have armed officers on campus, for example. It, it sounded like the, the time frame for finding out should we get that money is around October, sometime this fall. Do you know yet if we were to receive the money, if the city did that, who would be eligible for it, how it could be used? Yeah, it's it's too early to, to say that. And, and as you know, the, the federal process is sometimes unpredictable. Uh, but what I will say is that we had a good discussion about, you know, the mutual interest that we all have with regard to school safety. And we know that in particular, uh, the mandate for all school campuses to have an armed uh, guard is one that uh, a lot of schools simply cannot afford. And so working through uh, the state mandate and also the, the you know, resources available to school districts and what the federal government could provide to help meet some of the need. Uh, that's what we'll be working with over the next uh, several months. I look forward to additional conversations with, with Congressman Gonzalez about that. Because again, uh, what we won't want to do is make sure that people feel, feel safe in their communities in particular, the children who are off at school and their parents as well. Yeah, absolutely. Let's keep the conversation going here when it comes to dollars. There is a big city budget proposal on the table. We talked about that a little bit earlier, an update the city got today in terms of airport funding. I, I want to ask you about another big topic, though, in this budget, funding for animal care services. We heard from the city manager not too long ago that ACS really only has the staff to respond to about half of the calls they get about animal cruelty or aggressive dogs. How would an increase in funding make sure that that need is addressed? Yeah, so uh, keeping with public safety, the theme again, uh, public safety being job number one at the city for the departments that we manage as well, that goes for SAPD as well as animal care. And so there's a roughly 25% increase in the animal care services budget this year, and that is in part to help augment uh, spay and neuter services to control uh, the stray pet population, but also to res respond to those calls that we get for dangerous animals. Uh, and as you as you just said, um, the only department in the city where a call uh, does not get responded to is, is really an ACS because of the limited resources that have been available to that department for a long time. Something like 44% of calls are responded to within 24 hours. So. We need to do better at that. Uh, the city has put forth recommendations and I look forward to the city council uh, following through with additional funding to, to help support the ACS strategic plan. On the public, on the police department side, there's a number of things going on. 
Um, we've talked several times about uh, what's happening with patrol. We're trying to move from a 40% proactive and 60% reactive operational model with patrolling in SAPD to a 60-40 proactive reactive. And that's gonna require a significant number of more patrol officers on the street. Uh, so in this year's budget, we're gonna be adding 105 police officer positions. Um, and that's en route to adding an additional uh, 360 in total over the next three to five years. So we're beginning the process with a lot of good data and analysis and our partners from our partners in UTSA uh, to help us again respond to the uh, to the constituent concerns and also get us to an operational model that we are more effective and more efficient for for the San Antonio community. Another issue that was tops for San Antonians in a budget survey was the issue of homelessness. And I understand there is funding in this budget proposal to increase the number of homeless camp cleanups that would happen in the yeah. next fiscal year, funding about 700 of those. But so often yeah. we see those camps cleaned up and then hours later, people return to those same sites. So right. what can the city do to make sure that a, people have the help that they need, but also you're not spending money for a problem that continues to occur hours after a cleanup. And thank you for saying that, Myra, because obviously encampments are something we are concerned about. Uh, but if we just focus on encampments and, and you know, folks who uh, are concerned about that, if the only solution is to clean up the encampment, then we're just moving the problem from one place to another. What we've got to do is make sure that we outreach to folks to really get to the root causes of homelessness and provide services, whether that's, you know, uh, health services, uh, substance abuse services, uh, help to get an ID so they can apply for a job. There's a lot of different things that are underlying the symptom of homelessness, and we've got to get to those root causes. So before there's an encampment cleanup, there's a lot of outreach to connect people with the services that they need uh, to stay off the street permanently. Now, the problem that has we've encountered over, you know, and every city has over decades is that we just don't have uh, all of the resources in the entire spectrum of need in the community uh, for those types of services and also for the different types of shelters that we need to get folks into and off of the streets. Uh, and so over the last several years, we've been working comprehensively to, to identify and fill the gaps in the spectrum of homelessness services. And we're now at a point with this year's budget and with the work that's gone on in the previous years, including introducing more low barrier shelter opportunities, more permanent supportive shelter that has those services attached to the housing where we have places for people to go. So now that the encampments are happening or the, the encampment cleanups are happening and we're doing that outreach, we actually have places for people to be connected to they, so they can stay permanently off the street. It's not about just cleaning up the encampments. It's about making sure that people who are in the encampments have opportunity to get on their feet and off of the streets uh, permanently. All right, Mayor, thanks so much for joining us here this evening and safe travels. Thanks so much, Mara. Have a good night. Keep up to date with all of San Antonio's top news, weather, and so much more by clicking the like and subscribe buttons below. And once again, thanks for watching KSAT.